Hi, this is Cass, Cassia Hall, and today I'm going to be doing a line edit for Erica Damon. Now, Erica was a contributor to our spring edition of the anthology A Season for Romance, and she gave us a really nice futuristic romance, kind of like a sci-fi romance, called 16 Months and Light Years Away. So that's in our Spring Blossoms anthology that came out earlier this year. And for our next anthology, which is Summer Simmer, coming up um, in May next year, she has contributed a story called Carl and the Smithy. Now, this submission has already been accepted. Deva has done the developmental edit, so now it's my turn to do the line edit. Um, before I do that, I just want to point out that Erica is not a fantasy writer. Well, she is now, but she started off writing in suspense, thriller, and even horror. So fantasy is a new genre for her, but she's done really well. So I'm going to start the line edit. Carl gallops through the bog, misty morning air breezing over his face and through his curls. Okay, so this is tripping me up. I know what she means, but we can't always change a noun into a verb and retain the same meaning. The verb breeze is quite different from the noun breeze. The verb breeze say, you say somebody breezed through a room or someone breezed through their exams. It means they went through it very quickly, easily, maybe casually. But here, that's not the meaning we need. So this doesn't work here and we need to change this. Carl gallops through the bog. I think what we can do here is move Misty over here and change the verb back to the noun. Now this bit is implied and what we can do instead use a different verb here. Carl gallops through the misty bog, the morning breeze ruffling his curls. So that kind of gives us the same image. We retain the original meaning of the sentence, but it's smoother and it flows better. So line edit is always about readability. We want to make every sentence flow within itself and then on to the next sentence. Carl gallops through the misty bog, the morning breeze ruffling his curls. Well, I like it. I'm not sure if Erica will like it, so it's really up to her. And maybe she'll come up with something even better than that. His golden coat becoming much splattered as his hoof sunk into the thick wetland beneath him, but he didn't mind. Okay, so we have some problems with tense here. This shouldn't be continuous. It should be past tense. And this also should be the past tense. In fact, we can actually make this more active. What we can do is say much splatted his golden coat. So we don't need this here. As his hoof sank into the thick wetland and this is implied so we don't need it. 
but he didn't mind. He was out in the park for a reason, even if the other centaurs would roll their eyes at his acting like a lovesick horse. Now, this is a conditional tense, and a conditional tense would work if we have something like, if this happens, then this would happen. So, what is the condition? So the condition here would be, if the other centaurs were to see him acting like a lovesick horse, then they would roll their eyes then the conditional tense would work. Okay, so I'm going to just change that. If the other centaurs... Acting or behaving... They would roll their eyes at him. Well, that's implied too, so they would roll their eyes. So the condition would be if they saw him doing this, then they would do this. They would roll their eyes. So that's that would work here. Much splattered his golden coat. Or we can say much splattered all over just to make it a little bit more dramatic as it says, move sank into the thick wetland now I think that is a sentence in itself and I don't think we even need this what we can do is make this separate, he didn't mind he was out in the bark for a reason So this is one complete sentence, and this is another complete sentence, and they're very closely related to each other. So I'm inclined to use a semicolon here. I think that works better. Let's see. Cow gallops through the misty bog, the morning breeze ruffling his curls, mud splattered all over his golden coat as his hooves sank into the thick wetland. He didn't mind. He was out in the bog for a reason. If the other centaur saw him acting or behaving like a lovesick horse, they would roll their eyes. Okay. Now, the first sentence and the first paragraph are the most important. So, it's important to really, really pay attention. See how the protagonist is introduced. We know Carl is the protagonist. We know where he is. We even know what time of day it is. And we even have a sensory element. So this is a really good first sentence. I really like it. Now, is this a good first paragraph? Let's see. So we know what he's doing. And we even know his motivation. Oh, we have a hint as to his motivation. He's doing this on purpose. He's here for a purpose, for a reason. And we know exactly what he is if the other centaur saw him. So Carl is a centaur, but we can make it even clearer. If his fellow centaurs saw him, acting or behaving like a lovesick horse, they would roll their eyes. So we know he's lovesick. Right, so we have everything we need to know here. So I just want to point out that this flash has already undergone a developmental edit. And that's partly why we have everything we need in the first paragraph. Deva is always very um, careful about 
giving us a good first paragraph, making sure that the author has put all the necessary, the crucial information into the first paragraph. So this is actually a very good first paragraph. We know who the protagonist is. We know where he is. We have the setting. We have the time. We have some sensory elements. We know he's there for a reason. Um, so that speaks to his motivation. And we know he's lovesick. Okay, so this is a brilliant uh, intro to the piece. This is a really good first and strong first paragraph. Okay, so let's go to the second one. Second sounds echoing along the ton of trees that form the path back to the town. So we have, again, some um, tense issues here. This should be echoed. This should be past tense, not continuous. And that's, that's a little bit clunky. We don't think we need that at all. This will do, leading back to, and we don't even need this. Sucking sounds echoed along the tunnel of trees leading back to town. He slowed a moment and ran a hand through his hair, damp with sweat, but he pushed on until his front hoof caught and he relished in the odd sensation of the shoes separating from his hoof, nails popping out and leaving the iron in the muck. Success. Okay, so that shows us that he's doing this on purpose. He's being very deliberate about what he's doing. Um, so this is really good, but there's quite a bit that we can improve. Um, it's a little bit clumsy and I'll quit here, so let's put it here. We can use sweat soaked or sweat dampened. He slowed a moment and ran a hand through his sweat soaked or sweat dampened hair, but he pushed, so there's a comma there, that's good, we need that comma, but he pushed on until his front hoof caught. I think we don't need that space here, do we? I think the ellipsis. His front hoof caught. And I feel like we should have a little break here. Because that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to separate the shoe from his hoof. And by catching his front hoof, he's able to do this. So I feel like we need to separate that out. Almost I feel like there should be an exclamation mark here or just full stop to separate it out. Now, he relished in the odd sensation. This is filtering. So every time you have something like he thought, uh, he hoped, he wished, he wanted, um, you want to check to see if it's filtering. Filtering is something that puts an extra unnecessary layer between the reader and your story. And if you remove the filtering, the reader is that much more immersive. So you always want to check. And I feel like, yes, this is a filter. Because the important thing is the art sensation. Okay. So what we can do to deepen the POV, the point of view, and what exactly is the sensation? So we can use nem dash there. The shoes separated from his hoof, nails popping out and leaving the iron in the muck. Now, often, not always, but often when you remove the filter, you find that what comes after the filter is actually internal monologue. In this case, such a not sensation. You could put more emphasis on it by doing this, but you don't have to. And because there's already italics here. I try to keep italics to a minimum. Internal monologue should be kept to a minimum. So I think this works. Such an odd sensation. 
the shoe separating from his hoof, nails popping out and leaving the iron in the muck. I think that's good enough. And I almost feel like this might work better because that's what he's trying to do. And he can't separate the shoe until he catches that front hoof. And he's excited about that because that's what he's been trying to do. Okay, so um, it's not really a good idea to have too many exclamation marks. I'll keep those to a minimum as well. So that's up to Erica. Let's see. It was not easy to pull a shoe, not at all. Especially when it was just fit, fitted. Or the previous day by a fine smithy. A smithy who didn't mind if he shot horse or centaur, mule or unicorn. So this is the fantasy bit. So this is great. It's not a complete sentence. It's a sentence fragment. But I like it. I like that it's set out. Set off from the rest. So I will allow the sentence fragment. A hoof's a hoof, he always said. So this is smithy. And this is something that Carl is remembering. So it's almost like a line of dialogue. He's remembering what the smithy always says. I'm just querying the tense here because we're talking about the previous day. So especially when it had just been fitted, that probably would work better. Had just been fitted. The previous day. Because we're using um, past tense. So the previous day would be past perfect tense. Let's see. It was not easy to pull a shoe, not at all. Especially when it had just been fitted. Do we need just had been fitted the previous day? Because just as often a filler word had only been fitted the previous day. So I will query this. Need it? So how do we know? We, we take it out and we read it without that word. Especially when it had been fitted the previous day. So only the previous day they fitted it. You can argue for it. I don't mind. Had just been fitted. Had only been fitted. One or the other. But be careful of these little words. Only just often fill the words that we don't need. Especially when it had been fitted the previous day. I think it would work without. And that's good. And that's good. Okay. Smithy was busy. Creatures lined up for the shoe each day. It was impossible to find him anywhere besides his shop. Carl had tried more than once, walking around the town and peering in candlelit pub windows. Disappointed each time, Smithy was nowhere to be found. It left Carl with only one option. Throwing shoes to get a moment with him. <laughs> okay, so this is sweet. That's why he, he wants to throw that shoe, so he will get a, a moment with the Smithy. But I think we can make this more vivid. Because you always want to try and paint a word picture for your reader. So Smithy was busy. How about all manner of creatures lined up for the shoeing in front of his barn or along the street or add some detail here. So an example would be Smithy was busy, all manner of creatures lined up for their shoeing in front of his barn or along the street or whatever. So something to add colour and flavour to your story. Um, this would be a good sentence to add it because we want to see Smithy being busy, right? You're telling us he's busy, but how busy is he? You know, show us. So... A little bit of difference between showing and telling. So this is a good place to do that. It was impossible to find him anywhere besides his shop. Carl had tried more than once. So is that necessary? 
I'm just gonna put that here because often writers give too much information and it breaks flow and line edit is all about flow we try to make the read as smooth as possible so flow is very important it keeps the reader reading so we want to create and maintain that suspension of disbelief for the reader Cal had tried walking around the town and peering in candlelit pub windows now try as a as a weak verb and we always want to use stronger verbs and i'm wondering whether we even need this because it's implied when we say this right so maybe we could change this to something like Carl had wandered all over town if you want to to keep town or had wandered all over peering into candlelit pub windows so we don't even need and here karma would do Cal had wandered all over town, peering in, peering into one or the other. Let's see, peering into candlelit pub windows. And I don't think we even need this. If you put this, this is implied. Sometimes, you know, less is more. <laughs> it, it actually sounds more poignant without just saying he was nowhere to be found, right? Saying disappointed is more like telling, but saying nowhere to be found, that's more showing. Yeah, I feel like this is not necessary. I think it takes away from the poignancy. It left Carl with only one option, throwing shoes to get a moment with him. Okay, so um, a semicolon. A lot of people seem to have issues with um, semicolons. And it's actually quite simple. A semicolon separates two complete sentences. Okay, now this one, it left Carl with only one option. That is a complete sentence, but this is not a complete sentence. So we cannot use a semicolon here. What we can do is use an M dash. People love M dashes. Writers love M dashes. I think Erica would like this. So the option is this, right? Throwing shoes is the option. So yes, an M dash works here, but the semicolon would not work. It left Carl with only one option, throwing shoes to get a moment with him, with Smithy. Okay. Carl slowed, looking back at the bog, and the shine of a sil of silver clumped in the mud. Hmm. Carl slowed, looking back at the bog. So I see him doing this, and I see this, and I know what she means. The, the shoe is in the mud. And you just kind of see that horseshoe peeking through. So this kind of stopped me. It kind of tripped me a little bit because horseshoes are made of either steel or iron, I guess. And I kind of almost thought, oh, is that horseshoe made of silver? But of course it's not. It's about the color. It's about that, that glint, right? The, the shine. So, the shine of silver, the glint of silver. I think either would work. Shine of silver, the glint. I don't know. I'm going to put a, a query here. I like both. But I'm, I'm not sure I like this. I think we can say peeking through. And I wonder if we could just say iron instead of silver maybe it's just me <laughs> maybe that stopped me and won't stop anyone else i don't know so okay 
Yeah, but I, I know what she's going for. She's going for the color. Maybe this is okay. Carl slowed, looking back at the bark and the shine of the glint of silver peeking through the mud. Yeah, peeking through. He should bring the shoe, save Smitty the time of remaking it, save himself the cost. But he liked that time, and he could spare the cost. So I love this. Okay, it speaks to his motivation. He wants to spend that time with Smithy. He should bring the shoe, save Smithy the time of remaking it. The time of remaking it. Do we need this? Because that's implied, right? But I kind of like it. I, mean, I think it's it's good to, to have it, you know, for added clarity. Save himself the cost. But he liked that time. Yeah, so that's why she used time here, right? for that repeat because you want to to look at repetitions but sometimes the repetitions work really well and this is one of those occasions i mean she could have said the trouble right or the bother of remaking it but she used time because she used time here right so that's really clever and i like it i like it a lot so yeah i think it works really well save himself the cost but he liked that time. And maybe we can even go stronger here. He wanted that time. He wanted to spend that time with Smithy. Okay? So he liked that time. And he, he wanted that time. And he could spare the cost. Okay? That's that's really good. Yeah. I like, I like this a lot. With just three shoes out of four... He made quite the clip clop. That's lovely. Okay, I like that. It's so vivid, right? You see, you see the centaur clipping clopping as he passed over the cobblestone street. The shoe had not come off so cleanly this time, leaving his hoof tender and passed in sore. Yes, that's that's very nice. You see that? Okay, she's painting the picture for us using words. It was worth it, though. A pulled shoe would get him to the front of the line. <laughs> okay, this is great. Eager as he was, he took his time, letting his breath slow from his run and dipping a hand in the fountain in the center of town to wash down his face. Now, this is a very long sentence, so you know I'm going to change it. <laughs> right, let's see how. Eager as he was, he took his time, letting his breath slow from his run and dipping a hand in the fountain in the center of town to wash down his face. Don't think we need this. And I almost kind of see that fountain in the town square, right? So maybe we could change that to... Because if you say that, the reader is going to see that fountain in the town square, and of course, it would be the fountain would be in the middle, right, in the center. So is that enough? Eager as he was, he took his time, letting his breath slow from his run. Yeah, I almost feel like it's it should be breathing, but I think it's better as breath because we have two ing one ing verb here and one ing verb here we don't want another ing here letting his breath slow from his run we could always actually cut it off here so we can make that into two sentences just you know not have the reader go breathless <laughs> so think about your reader you know um eager as he was he took his time, letting his breath slow from his run. He dipped a hand. Yeah, because this, he has to, to do this first. Well, not exactly. I mean, he could dip his hand at the same time as his breathing slows. So, fair enough. It doesn't have to be two sentences. It could be, you know, you can stop the sentence here and then say he dipped a hand in the fountain in the town square to wash his face. Or we can just 
do this. So it's, it's very subconscious. Your reader will actually prefer you to put that comma here and then they can have a tiny bit of a pause before they read the rest of the sentence. It is a long sentence. Okay. But we did take out three words. Well, we added one back. <laughs> Eager as he was, he took his time, letting his breath slow from his run and dipping a hand in the fountain in the town square to wash his face. Yeah, you can even say, and dipping a hand in the, in the town square fountain to wash his face. And then you can get rid of this. Because you have in the here, and then you have in the here. So that's the kind of repetition that can trip a reader up. And if you do that, then you'll get rid of one of, the, one of these two. So that's a, an option. In the town square fountain. It's very subconscious, right? Having this here and then repeating it here. But it's not a biggie, I mean. I think it's fine. Eager as he was, he took his time, letting his breath slow from his run and dipping a hand in the fountain in the town square to wash his face. I think it works. Okay, good. Okay, so that's the first page done. 